Welcome back to our channel. It's Farmer Will. And Jesse and I Winter. And we're doing another Love Island All Stars review. What a crazy week. Yeah. I it feel is. like this is just madness. It actually feels chaotic just watching it. I know. It feel, it's only been on for like two weeks, hasn't it? And it just, I don't know about you guys watching as well, but it just feels like so much has happened within the two weeks and it feels like it's been going on for ages. Literally, it's so hard to like do these reviews because by the time we finish it, the next episode's come out and so much has changed. It's so like, much. What? Yeah, so much oh. has happened. I do feel I feel like as well it is week two and I don't think there's any like strong couples. There's no strong couples. Yeah, we were actually talking about this uh, the other day. There's not a specific couple which no. you could go, ah, oh, you know, they're in a really good place. They're really, really strong. They're going to do really well. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know if it's because everyone has like the preconceived perceptions of everyone or because they know each other beforehand. Because they've all had history. <laughs> Everyone's got history. Yeah. It is. It's X Island. Yeah. It's actually crazy. I even heard Arabella say at one point that she had history with Tom. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, everyone has got history. Yeah. That kind of makes me wonder as well. So before I went on Love Island UK, I actually got asked to do Love Island Games. Ah, yes. And when I was in the casting process for that, I was talking to the other Australian people that were potentially going on it. We were all like talking among each other. So we all knew mm, who was would. going on the show. Oh no, 100% you would reach out because yeah. it is, I do definitely feel like with the Love Island group, like everyone that's been on Love Island, you do all know each other and you do all knock about in the same circles and see each other and it's just so easy to just DM or see someone and be like, oh, yeah. Love Island, All Stars, are you going on? Are you not going on sort Literally, of Literally, especially if everyone's like got all this history together. Like I feel like you'd know kind of who's going on it. Yeah. So it does make me wonder, I'm like, have people kind of like discussed this prior to going on the show? Mm. Cause like, mm. or you're gonna kind of like know, you'd be like sussing each other's socials and whatnot. Oh yeah, you would. But so much has happened this week, so let's, kind of like go back to the start and I think the most pinnacle point is Tom came in from our season. Oh yeah, Tom, what you doing there? Terrace Tom. I know, Tom came in. Do you know what, <laughs> out of everyone in our season, I think if I had to pick someone, I would have picked Tom. Yeah, I agree. I think like, Tom's got value. He's like, just good on the show, I think, yeah. Good looking chap, bit of a ladies man. And he's clearly got a history of quite a few people in the villa, so. Yeah, yeah. first person, Georgia. Steele. Georgia Steele. Yeah, because I think they went on a Jet 2 trip together. Yeah. They went on a Jet 2 trip together. I think there was quite a, a few different islanders that went on. And I think a, something happened on that Jet 2 and then they went on a date. I think Georgia even said that, that romantic gesture where he, he lost he his drove. phone and drove up and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had no idea he had um, a thing with Arabella either. Mm. I do kind of feel bad for Sammy. I did send Sammy a message, just said, I hope you're okay. Because I do feel like it would be weird seeing your ex on TV, especially if your ex, because they feel like- Seeing your ex, but then you've got to think, there's ex, loads of exes in the villa as well, I isn't know. it? But like, imagine having to sit at home and watch like the media write about your ex. I just think well, that would be- Wouldn't watch it. No, you, you would want to like leave. And yeah. that would just be really like not nice. Hopefully Tom is making this whole Love Island thing worthwhile and hopefully he does come out with a with someone, I guess. You also had another bombshell come in, Sophie, which, she didn't cause a ruckus, but her entry in the villa did cause a massive ruckus, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like Sophie's just chilling in there doing her thing. Chris definitely found a liking to her. Mm. Um, what do you think about that whole situation? Because I guess you've got to take it back with, so Chris was with Arabella, Arabella, um, no, Chris went on a date with Sophie, they wanted to carry things on, but then obviously, I think it was a little bit disrespectful that he held her hand in front of Arabella. I can completely understand where yeah. she's coming from. And then you have their massive, massive argument. I feel like the fact that I've opened up to you, right? And you've literally thrown that back in my face by being holding her hand. I haven't called you disingenuous yeah, though, but, babe. Yeah, because I've not been. Two guys have walked in here and I haven't because looked twice at them. you don't fancy them. But I've got history with Tom. I fancied him at one point. Tyler You said to me you guy. don't fancy them. You can't give me one reason and then change your mind now. Yeah, but it's also because I don't it's not suiting you and the situation's not working for you. Don't be, why are you being patronising? I'm not being patronising. Both, both of us have been vulnerable. Please don't raise your oh voice. God, I'm not okay, going to keep whatever. talking to you. Yeah, okay, so, you know what? So, this is when you know <laughs> so. Jesse's going to be coming in. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much on this just because you don't know all the ins and outs of this situation. However, watching that discussion between Chris and Arabella literally made my blood Boyle! Talk to me. I feel like your feelings towards me and like the stuff we spoke about on our date is not 
perhaps how I thought you felt, if you want me to be completely honest. And I do have feelings, like, okay. and that's why I'm hurting right now, Chris. I, I had a conversation with Sophie this morning, mm -hmm. and then basically everyone's been telling me that you're absolutely fuming at me for holding a hand. When last night you sat on the sun deck with me and said, I'm going to be respectful and I'm not going to do anything in front of your and face. I hold my hands up and apologise for that. <laughs> you can tell my intentions were in the right place because I didn't want to be in your eye line whilst I was talking to her. But that's why I'm annoyed. That's the only reason I'm annoyed. Can we dial it down a bit, please? <sighs> Mm -mm. Okay, so for me, it isn't, you know, the holding the hand situation, that's one thing. Yep. But I don't think that's the main situation here. I think it's the mm -hmm. way he spoke to her. Mm -hmm. Because the way he spoke to her showed just how much respect he has for her. Mm. Because you know what? All we needed to do is say, I'm sorry that I upset you. Like, you don't have to say that you're in love with her. You don't have to want to be in a couple yeah. with her. Just say, I'm sorry that I upset you. He was very, very patronising. I didn't enjoy that conversation. No, I didn't like it either. I feel like Arabella, I've like seen a few comments about her on social media and stuff as well, people judging her. I think she's actually a strong, independent woman. Mm. And I actually think that no one's cutting her slack here. Nice. I think she really did do the best that she could in that situation between that conversation. I think it's no, it's, it's never nice when you're coupled up with somebody and then them go on a date and want to carry it, carry it on further when mm. you want to pursue, obviously, the person you're in a couple with. It's never a nice situation. However, how no. he dealt with it, I think, first of all, you should never tell someone to lower their voice. No. I think that's so, it's so rude. It, like, invalidates what she's saying. Yeah. So, you know, she's expressing that she's upset and she's hurt. And instead of him, you know, actually taking what she said on board, he chooses to tell her to lower her voice. Well, that is literally, like, almost like stamping authority and, like, making them feel smaller instead of actually listening. I got that as well because he kept going, babe. Do you know, he kept calling her babe. Like, that that would make her feel so small. And it Literally. got to a point where she was like, don't call me babe. Like, don't. I don't want you to call me babe. Accept your apology. Babe, honestly. Don't call me babe. Honestly. Sorry. Arabella. I can't see myself with somebody that would ask me to be open, receive the openness, and then throw it back in my face. Yeah, but I can't be so, with someone that doesn't want to communicate with me, so. Okay, well this is done then, that's cool. It is done. Okay. Further to move on, the recoupling. Mm. Oh, go Kaz. Oh, yes, I actually. <laughs> Can uh, someone come in for Kaz? Yes, put someone in for Kaz right now. Can someone come in for Kaz, please? What is going on here, like why? Mm. But I just think with this whole recoupling, Chris, chose to make Arabella feel like an idiot in front of everyone. Instead of, he could have complimented Kaz, he could have just done it in a friendly way, but instead he chose to stand there huff and puff and tell everyone that it's over to like, like what? I what know. is the, what's Even, the reason? Yeah, everyone was shocked. Did you see how Kaz, yeah. but I liked how Kaz, after the recovering, went and hugged Arabella, made sure that she was okay. And she actually stood up to Chris after afterwards. Yeah. You know, which, which she should. All I was thinking in my head is like, it's, I think it was the huffing and the puffing and the, like, uh, like it was like dig after dig. I just thought you were being like rude. You know, I think some sometimes people might be like, oh yeah, I've been picked, I'm in a couple, but she was like, nah, she didn't yeah, care. Yeah. She didn't care if she's got picked or not. Um, just girls and girl. Yes, I, I'm actually gonna say, I think Taz is too good for the show. Yeah. Taz is too good for the show. Mm. I'm sorry, those- Period. The men in there do not deserve Taz. Mm. Mm. Talking about the recoupling and the speeches, Mitch. Oh my god. What? He's literally just saying he's drawing blanks. Like, he's just happy to be in the villa having okay. a holiday. M me and Jesse had a bit of a disagreement on, on how we took Mitch's recoupling. So I want you to let us know how you read the situation. So I'm probably wrong now I think about it, but... but well, no, you might not be. So I thought, so when Mitch gave the recoupling speech, first of all, I thought it, I did giggle when he was like, our oh, tongue's flying, although I don't know the time. Thought that was funny. But then however, he went, oh, I'm drawing blanks. Jesse thought he was drawing blanks because the guys were laughing at him and he couldn't concentrate. However, I thought he was drawing blanks because he didn't know what to say about liberty. Yeah, so I took I don't know if I'm just trying to like see the good in the situation. I thought that Mitch will actually just play it here. The time flies by not even though I don't even know the time. <laughs> Drawing blanks here guys. So I thought Mitch was like saying what he said but then I think because the people laughed he like almost got embarrassed and then he said to them, guys, I'm drawing blanks. As mm. in like, he's trying to think and you're standing there laughing at me. 
I'd get distracted if people laughed at me. I'd yeah. get like taken and then not know what to say. Yeah. Um, that's how I first took it. But then I do also, um, mm. I don't know. Honestly, but, I watched this show and I think one thing about someone and then five minutes, I'm like, what? Yeah. So <laughs> the whole situation different. with Mitch and Liberty, you had, so Mitch has made her cry twice. And this is probably one of my favorite moments from the last two weeks is Anton putting Mitch in his place. <laughs> If your girl comes crying to me asking for advice, I will give her my advice. You've been together seven days, you've made her cry twice. Look at yourself and don't look at me. Be a man, not a boy. I don't want to mention this place. Oh my God, I thought that was like unbelievable te telly. You are talking to Lip behind my back, going against me and it's not really bro code. There's no bro code, there's right and wrong. There's no bro code. What do you mean there's no bro code? You give your opinion and you me like an idiot. But I'm telling you my opinion. But why? Because that's my opinion of you. Yeah, you're just a bit. Of a I just thought it was the funniest thing that Mitch came to Anton. You know, thought he was gonna get, have Anton in a chokehold, and then Anton looks him directly in the eyes and was basically, "You are a boy. I am a man. Check yourself before you wreck yourself." That's not how I perform. If someone comes to me and asks me, I'll be truthful. Full stop. You're asking me to drop my beliefs and my values. There's a lot less guys in here. How oh, I bro code that thought, and you're one of them. And also, can we just speak about this like bro code thing? Like, it's not bro code, it's, it's actually called being polite. Doesn't matter what gender you are, you can be polite. Yeah, that's not bro code. Bro code would be like if you have two mates in the villa and one of the mates goes behind your back to try and pursue a girl. That would be bro code. However, the definition that Mitch was trying to put bro code and be like, oh, um, giving your own opinion about the situation. That's nothing to do. That's just having morals. Mm. That's being a good guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. A good guy will look after anyone, whether mm. you're a girl, whether you're a boy. Yeah. And I feel like this whole like thing of like, you know, boys have to have each other's back. If you're doing the wrong thing, no one's going to have your back. <laughs> yeah, and also Anton wasn't doing it to try and give him the upper foot, the upper no. hand. It wasn't like Anton was benefiting from this from any, like any single way. Anton was just saying his opinion because he was raised right and he is a good man. Yeah, clap to Anton. We, we love, we do. We, we really, really love Anton. And I feel, I feel like the response that he's getting online as well, everyone's backing him, which is, we love to see. And we love to see people like support people that are doing the right thing. Yes. Further from that, what does blow my mind a little bit, is nobody is going for Anton. Yeah, so right. G Georgia Harris, I kind of understand where she's coming from and I kind of, it, it, in a backwards way, it's good that she did cool things off because- Respect for the way she did it. Respectfully, she's not feeling it. Rather than going, oh, I don't know who to go for in the villa. Anton's the easy option, so I'm gonna go with him. She just wasn't feeling it, so said it. Although it is, we, uh, all of our hearts broke for Anton. I think she made the right decision. However, what we're seeing now that she fancies Mitch and might go for Mitch, I'm not buying it. I'm <laughs> actually not buying it. I'm not buying it. One single bit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually know. I can't even comment on it because it actually just blows my mind. Out. I don't know if it's because everyone in there kind of has a thing with one person or two people. However, Mitch now isn't with Liberty and then they're kind of like they're making it friends. Nothing's going on with them. Anton, Georgia, they've made it friends and it's kind mm. of... Mitch, I couldn't think of another boy that Georgia could go with. Yeah. Do you know what I kind of think about this um, Love Island? I feel like when the producers do the casting for the normal Love Island, they do really go into depth of compatibility. They yeah. want a few people to be couples. 100%. Like Will and I, I literally had, they made us do a picture before we went into the villa and I said, I like drew this person. I'm not even kidding. I swear to God, I drew you. It was like a blonde man. He was like taller than me. And I said, we're just going to be best, absolute best friends. We're best gonna... buddies. Yeah, literally. Like I drew a petite girl basically stood in front of my farmhouse holding <laughs> loads of animals. And that's exactly what I got. So like the compatibility between us was just insane. And mm. I do think that producers work really hard to make sure people find each other. Honestly, the amount of applicants they get for Love Island is insane. However, I think when they're doing Love Island All-Stars, they don't have that broad pick of people. They literally just have ex-islanders that are single. It's mm. harder because as well, not every islander wants to come on the show. They don't no. have as many people to choose from, so they're not gonna successfully find as many compatible people. I wonder if, they, uh, if they've put people in there on purpose who have had things with one another. I do know when I did the casting for the Love Island Games thingy, this is like way back before Love Island UK, um, they asked like 
they did ask about other islanders and stuff like that. Mm. So I feel like the casting process would have to be similar. Well, Jesse also got offered to go on to Love Island All Stars. Little inside goss for you. While we were together. Awkward. Producers, um, what the flippity flip do you think you're doing? Yeah. So we've got Georgia and Callum at the moment. And I feel like my opinion has changed slightly. Yeah. My, my opinion has changed slightly. You know, I felt real sorry for Callum. And I was maybe almost swaying towards him in the situ in in the position of, of Callum and Molly. However, now I've watched more and I understand a bit more, I do feel for Molly a little bit. If you go back to when they had kind of like had their first discussions, that she was like, You didn't give me anything with in within three and a half years. Yeah. She wanted a future, she wanted proposals, she wanted all these different things, and Callum wasn't giving it to her. So I think in that villa, all she wants is Callum to just grow some balls and be like, I still love she you. She wants to be proven wrong. Yeah, she wants to. And that's maybe why she did have that kiss with Chris. She really wants this love and I I feel so bad for her because I'm like, I just don't think Callum is going to give that to her. No, no. Especially what happened within that truth and dare game. 16 people. Mm. 16 people. I know. Do you if, know what? If you break up with someone with three and a half years and you've slept with 16 people and then he gave the excuse, oh, you know, I was just enjoying being single. However, Molly was his first girlfriend, so he's done that beforehand. I think it was a really sloppy excuse and it just, it did really probably open Molly's eyes up because Callum was the one who did want to break up with Molly. Mm. I feel like if I was Molly and I heard that, I'd be just devastated. Yeah, you you could see I it on just, her face. Yeah, and you know what? I think she's trying to hold as much integrity as she can with the situation because it's fucking embarrassing. I would, like, I don't know how she's still doing it. She's trying to really hold her head up high and I really do think she's, like, breaking on the inside. It's not healthy. No. I do also see a lot of hurt in Callum's face, though. Yeah. I feel like they both just can't communicate. So they're both doing whack things because I think they're both hurt. Yeah, 100%. I don't think Callum went and slept with 16 people because he wanted to hurt Molly or anything. I think like, he still has a lot of love there for her and he doesn't know how to directly tell her. Mm. She wants him to say, she wants him to tell her. It's like skinny love. They both love each other, but they don't want to tell each other. And now they're doing whack things to get at each other. And it's just not, it's not the vibe. How do you think with Molly and Tom? Molly and Tom. Mm. I, like, I think it's, an, I think I can... I don't know if I can see them working. I can I, and I can't. I do think with Molly and Tom, it's nice for Molly to have someone appreciate her. But then I also feel like but that's sort of being taken away by Georgia again. Yeah, it is. I feel like in the normal Love Island, like a kiss... A, a, a kiss? <laughs> a kiss is a massive thing. But in this one, it's not. Everyone's just kissing everyone and it's just getting brushed off. Like, even when Tom and Georgia were speaking, it was like, oh, I kissed Callum. And he, and he was like, oh, well, I kiss Molly. And yeah. she was like, oh, you only did that because I went to the hideaway. I have do, a weird, you know okay, I, mean? I have a, like a question or a thought about this Love Island. Do you think because they all know each other before, they know what everyone's like social status is and they know like everything about everyone because before they went in, do you feel like it's like more of a like competitive environment? Yes. Because I don't think, I don't feel like there's that much friendship in there. Yeah, um, it's like getting one up, do you think? Yeah, it's not like friendships. I don't feel like, you know, when I went on Love Island Australia, it was like friendships for life. Like... You know, you wanted the best for everyone else, but I just, I do think it's not that, I don't think it feels that close. Something we are noticing a lot is that there's no challenges. There's games, like little games, but yeah. there's no specific challenges. And I think the challenges were, when I was in the villa, they were one of my favorite things to do. Like it was fun. Yeah, I think like, I don't know if it's a different format because it's obviously the All Stars ones, but I don't know if they're saving the challenges for later. It's already, is this the start of week three? Yeah, we're coming into week three. So coming into week three, we haven't had any proper challenges. Imagine if they bring these challenges out in the last few weeks and like, for example, movie night. Imagine if Callum and Georgia stay together and then movie night and what has been said with Tom on the terrace comes out. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm actually oh, do watching. Do you think there'll be movie night? I don't know, but I'm watching all this unfold being like, the producers will have something up their sleeve. So you had a little bit of inside info about kind of like the format, didn't you? Yeah, so supposedly the format is going to be different and there's no Casa more. Which, do you know what? I actually don't know how they were going to string enough people along for Casa. But I think Casa would have been juicy. But then I'm like, are they going to bring back There's some of the classic? There's not enough people. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think like a lot of Islanders have turned down the opportunity. Like not everyone wants to do it again. A lot of people just don't. I wonder, they must be doing something instead of Casa because Casa was a big thing. Imagine if they brought in 
non all stars for the oh cast. Oh my god, non all stars for the cast. But I don't think they'd go for them. Do you know what I mean? Because they think they're like, they know each other, so they know who, they know how it all works. Like, I think there's got to be something. There's you cannot watch for six weeks or eight weeks what's what's been happening in the first two weeks. That can't happen. Yeah. It just can't. I'm I think sorry. everyone I misses the challenges as well. I wouldn't watch it. I yeah. would stop watching. Like, I'm getting to a point now where I'm a bit like, you're back and forth. Yeah, and like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling like the love aspect. And like, at least have one couple that are in there falling in love. It's cute watching people fall in love. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, there's got, there's got, I reckon they will have something to spice it up. Because mm. is it for six weeks or eight weeks? I don't know. I think it's like six to eight weeks. And then because yeah. the final week's only half a week. Yeah. But something's yeah. got to happen. Let us know what you think your predictions are because I just can't see it carrying, like the format carrying it on how it's been going. There's got to be something to change. A it. little twist. I Let's definitely, just spice it up. Yes. I definitely think that they should do movie night though. I want to see movie night. And but I movie bet you night's only for Casa. Really? Nah, they could still do it. Think yeah. about it. Like all the things people have said behind each other's backs. I think that they need to bring the lie detector back. I don't what? know if they have it in the UK one, but it was like, <laughs> they did it in like the early Australian ones. And I think they've done it in a few. What, like of an the actual UK. lie detector? Yeah, oh well, my God, yeah, I've seen yeah. old, old clips. I don't Wait. know if it's like a real lie detector or how it works, but it's a lie detector and yeah. you're supposed to tell the truth. I don't they know. They should you... actually bring in a <laughs> real lie detector. Yeah, imagine that. Like it's given that type of season though. Like this is not a love season. This is a juicy season. This is like a sassy season. You know what actually one thing I think about? You see all this drama on TV, but like when you're actually in the villa, like you have to have lunch and dinner together and everything. Like the boys have lunch together. The girls have lunch together. You're all grouped together all the time. Yeah. So it's like they're spending so much time with each other. Yet they're all like, maybe none of, no, maybe no one actually cares that much in there. It's, what we've got to remember, because this is what I found. It's an hour being filmed, but 24 hours. Yeah. So a lot of the time, Obviously, stuff is made to look worse than it actually is. Yeah. However, it does look, it is pretty drama filled. Maybe that's why they haven't done the challenges because everyone knows each other. The challenges are like icebreakers to get to know. This week, they brought in the bombshells, Tom and Sophie. And with the way that it's been going, no challenges. I'm predicting more bombshells for this week. There's got to be more, but then. Who? <laughs> Do you know what the most difficult thing with this is? Because no one's in a solid couple, you'll put bombshells in and it's not like they're going to rough up or ruffle up the couples or anything like that. Mm. So I, I yeah. think they might want a bit of time for actual couples to But then I'm like, get are strong. people compatible in there? Are they gonna get strong? I feel like Sophie actually seems quite nice, Sophie and Josh. They seem pretty... Sophie and Josh, yeah. I can actually see that. They look good yeah. together as well. Sophie's a really lovely girl too. Yeah, she is. But yeah, I just think, are there going to be that many strong couples? Maybe there are in the... Produ like, maybe know. there are. They're just not getting airtime, the happy couples. Maybe. I don't maybe. know. That would be something that they'll do though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but what we want to know is what you will think. Because although we love making these videos, what I really enjoyed about last time was reading through everyone else, what they were commenting and what they were thinking. So let us know what you your predictions are for the next weeks in the comments below. Another thing that I did see come to light on social media that actually made me really laugh was a video of Callum swimming in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> So um, there was like a big comment section, people talking about how like, oh, finally someone's used the pool. Mm. Um, uh, the funny thing with that as well is earlier he had a conversation with Georgia and said to try and top what Tom did, he was going to swim over the Atlantic. And then uh, I saw on the Love Island Instagram page, they put some funny music <laughs> over him, like struggling to swim. Oh my god. Oh my god, that just like clicked something in my brain. Do you reckon Callum's so into Georgia right now because he feels competitive because Tom is with Molly? Do you know what I mean? Maybe uh, that's further making him work harder and be more into it because mm. now he feels threatened by Tom. There, I think there might be a sense of like ego. Yeah. Your ego. Yeah. Your ego sort of thing. However, I think he was pretty into Georgia beforehand. True. I didn't think they were cute at the start, but anyways, I'm not going to talk about them anymore because that just, my mind changes every two seconds because it's actually chaos. Yeah. Back to Callum in the pool though, there was loads of questions asking why 
we don't use the pool or why the pool isn't used. The pool actually is used. It's not it used that often. Oh mm. my God, I'm not even kidding. Literally once there was a, a rat in the pool. Do you remember that? Oh my God, And Tom yes. got in and saved the rat. He didn't save it. But it we died, tried to bless save him. it. Tried to give it CPR as well. Mm. And it just, we had a little funeral for it. Yeah, it was it. really, really sad. There was like a, a rat in the pool and it was trying to swim. So Tom got in the pool and scooped it out with a hat. Yeah. Um, so the pool's used. It does have rats in it, but yeah. <laughs> prior to the rats, mm. we would swim in the pool. But the thing is, you have to take your microphone off to go in the pool. And you're not allowed conversations. You have to save the chat. So when you're in the pool and you're obviously you have to take your mic off, you can't have a conversation because obviously the producers are like, oh, what if they're saying something juicy? What if we miss it? And things like that. So you have to swim in the pool and not talk to anyone. So if you did want to call off or go for a swim, you'll do it for like five, 10 minutes, want to have a conversation and then they'll go over the voice of God, which is the voice that speaks it's to like, us. It's like a PA system, like yeah. from school. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll go, Jesse, put your mic on or Will, put your mic on if you want to have a conversation. Like what would happen is we'd get in the pool and be like, yeah, we're not going to talk. And then you'd a accidentally talk. Yeah. And then you'd almost get banned from you'd going get, in the pool. You'd get told off. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to go to the beach hut while you sit there and they're like, no, not talking in the pool. Yeah. So people do kind of swim in the pool, but not as much as y'all think. But I didn't swim in the pool after the rat. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yeah. I'm always sad when the rat died. I quite enjoyed the pool. I don't know if they do it in this season, but in our season, we'd stand in the corner with our feet in. Because yeah. we were like too hot, but then... Like half and half, but yeah. you wanted to wear the mic. you have to have your microphone on. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, this is just bringing back so many memories. Reminiscing. I know, it actually is. Especially that exact villa, seeing it on our screens every day. I'm just like, there's some good memories Ooh. and some bad memories from that villa, but lots of good ones. <laughs> Thank you for watching another review from us. We hope you're enjoying them. We're enjoying watching. Hopefully all of you are enjoying watching as well. So please let us know what your Love Island All-Star predictions are for the next week. I would just like to say as well, everything we have said in this video is purely judged on what we've seen of Love Island. Just because we see things a certain way on TV doesn't exactly mean that's exactly how it's working in the villa. You know, they've got 24 hours a day to cut and chop down to an hour. So, you know, remember at the end of the day, these islands are people, they all have hearts, they all have feelings. And, you know, we might not be seeing things exactly as they are, but, you know, we do find it fun watching the show and kind of like analyzing as it is. Yeah. So just remember everyone's human. They're all human. When they come out of the villa, let's leave this behind in the villa with them, you know? That's what I think anyways. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Remember to click like and subscribe. Love, Love ya, bye. bye. <laughs>